Welcome back, everybody, to another Ravnica Guild's Deck Tech. I'm Joseph, and this week we're going to be looking at Golgari with black and green. Our commander today is going to be Obelisk Spider. Obelisk Spider is a 1-4 spider creature for 1 black green that has reach, and whenever Obelisk Spider deals combat damage to a creature, put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on that creature. It also has whenever you put 1 or more minus 1 minus 1 counters on a creature, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. So, looking at that ability, we're pretty solidly in a minus one counter tribal deck. However, what makes this particularly interesting to me is that it sits at a crossroads between minus one counters, life gain, and life loss for our opponents. So anytime that we are using minus one counters to weaken opposing creatures, we're also weakening our opponents directly, while also making ourselves stronger. Our goals for this deck are pretty simple. We're going to use minus one counters to weaken our opponents and their creatures through attrition and either drain them out or kill them with infect damage. So our primary goal for this deck is going to be finding ways to put minus one counters on our opponent's creatures. So in addition to our commander, we've got creatures with infect, like Rotwolf, Flensermite, and Corpse Cur. Rotwolf is a 2-2 wolf creature with infect for 2 and a green that also has whenever a creature dealt damage by Rotwolf this turn dies, you may draw a card. So this is one of the few repeatable card draw effects that we have in this deck and it's going to make sure that we have a steady stream of cards coming into our hands to replenish our supply. Flensermite is a 1-1 gremlin for 1 and a black that has infect but also has lifelink, meaning that we get additional life gain triggers off of this creature. Corpse Cur is a 2-2 artifact hound for 4 mana that, in addition to Infect, has an Enter the Battlefield effect that we can return a creature card with Infect from our graveyard to our hand. So this is going to be very important for mid or late game for returning those more delicate Infect creatures from our graveyard to our hand after they've gone through battle. In addition to Infect, we can use creatures with an older ability called Wither. Now, Wither doesn't have the poison counter mechanic that can be used to take out players, but it will put counters on our opponent's creatures all the same. So for this, we've got Rendclaw Trow, a 2-2 troll for 2 and a Golgari, that has Wither, but it also has Persist. So whenever this is killed from battle or from an opponent's card effect, it'll come back with a minus 1, minus 1 counter, and that will actually give us another trigger from our commander, making sure that we get another drain effect. We have other cards with Wither, like Smoldering Butcher, a 4-2 Elemental Warrior for 3 and a black that has just straight Wither. And this card is particularly powerful because most of our other Wither or Infect creatures have only a power of 2 or less. This one will actually be enough to make our opponents think about swinging into us, and it's going to make our opponents have to consider trading or seriously weakening even their largest beaters. Now, as can be seen from both Rend Cloud Trow and Smoldering Butcher, many of our creatures don't have high toughness, so we will be needing to find ways to keep our creatures in play. The first way we're going to be doing this is with First Strike. With this, even if our enemy creatures survive the initial combat, there's a good chance that they will be sufficiently weakened by those minus one counters that our creatures will survive the interaction. For this, we've got Bladed Pinions and Rigid Cusite. Bladed Pinions is an artifact equipment for two mana that has Equipped creature has both flying and first strike. So in addition to first strike, bladed pinions is also going to give our creature flying, which will either allow us to get through with infect damage or will allow us to keep up a blocker to constantly stop our enemy flyers. Rigid Cusite is a 1-1 horror spell shaper for a single black mana that says pay one and a black and tap, discard a card. Target creature gets plus one plus so and gains first strike until end of turn. So this is going to allow us to chuck dead cards from our hand so that we can, at instant speed, give any of our creatures first strike, making our opponents have to think even harder about whether they want to block us or swing at us and how they want to interact with our creatures and which ones. However, our best way to protect our creatures is going to be through Regenerate. So with this, we actually have the OG Regenerate, which is an instant for one in a green that says Regenerate Target Creature. That means the next time that creature would be destroyed this turn, it isn't. Instead, tap it, remove all damage from it, and remove it from combat. 
The reason why we want to regenerate effects is that it does not negate the damage step the way that fog effects do. We want our opponent's creatures to take damage because every time they so much as touch our creatures, they're going to be weakened. So with just a little setup, we're going to have a wall of creatures that will drain both our opponents and their monsters every time they swing at us. So with this, we're going to have additional cards like Boon of Erebos, which is another instant for a single black mana that says target creature gets plus two plus zero until end of turn, regenerate it at the cost of two life on our end. In addition, we have enchantments like Blessing of Leeches, an aura enchantment for two and a black that says you can play Blessing of Leeches anytime you could play an instant. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and pay zero mana, regenerate enchanted creature. So this is one of the best cards because we can play it at instant speed, similarly to Boon of Erebus or Regenerate, and it means that for free, from that point onwards, we can regenerate our creature at the mere cost of only one life per turn, but we're going to get plenty of life gain triggers from our commander, so this is going to be a non-factor in our deck. But what if our opponents don't want to swing into our creatures? What if they don't want to block? What if they have some kind of a pesky technical creature that is going to avoid combat at all costs? So for that, we're going to need to bring our creatures to them. And for that, we're going to use Bite Spells, so called after Rabid Bite, a sorcery for one and a green that says target creature we control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. This is going to allow our creatures to deal damage to whatever target we want on the board. And because our creatures with Wither and Infect deal that damage with minus one counters, this is going to act as both a kill spell and also going to give us those minus one counter benefits. In addition to those Rabid Bites cards, we're going to have Viridian Longbow, which is going to be a definite all-star in this deck. Viridian Longbow is an artifact equipment for one mana with equipped three, and equipped creature has tap. This creature deals one damage to any target. So with this equipment, we can use any of our creatures to consistently ping an enemy creature. And because our creatures will be dealing the damage, we will be putting minus one counters on them every turn, making them weaker and weaker. Now, once we have minus one counters on enough creatures, we can really go to town using proliferate. For this, we're going to use instant effects like a grim affliction and instant for two and a black that says put a minus one counter on target creature, then proliferate but we're going to get serious abuse out of Urban Daggertooth, a 4-3 dinosaur for 2 green green that has Vigilance and Enrage whenever Urban Daggertooth is dealt damage proliferate. When I saw this card, I was honestly shocked that it's a common, but it is and we're going to use it. So our commander counts how many creatures are getting counters, not how many counters they are getting. That means that whenever we get a proliferate effect off of Grim Affliction or Urban Daggertooth, we can get a huge drain effect because proliferate will allow us to put a single minus one counter on every single enemy creature that already has one. We do this once, maybe twice, we could drain our opponents enough to completely reverse the game, if not win outright. Speaking of, how are we going to win? First off, we're going to use drain effects to grind out our opponents and win the game. We're already getting this effect with our commander, but we have a few other cards to take advantage of this. Now with all of these minus one counters going around, a lot of creatures are going to be dying, and Falcon Wrath Noble is really going to put in work to kill our opponents. Falcon Wrath Noble is a 2-2 vampire noble for three and a black that has flying, and whenever Falcon Wrath Noble or another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain one life. In addition, each commander trigger is going to get us a life gain effect, which we are going to take advantage of with Blood Researcher and Epicure of Blood. Blood Researcher is a 2-2 Vampire Druid for one black green that has Menace, and whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on Blood Researcher. Epicure of Blood is a 4-4 Vampire for four and a black that has, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Blood Researcher is going to become absolutely massive very quickly, and has that Menace Evasion that could allow it to swing in for lethal, while Epicure for Blood is going to make all of our drain effects hurt our opponents twice as much, getting us that much closer to that win. However, one weakness of the deck is that our opponents are going to want to avoid making contact with our creatures as much as possible. That would prevent the minus one counter placement as well as all of our drain effects. That just won't do. So in order to force those interactions, we're going to have lure effects. 
the best of which is going to be Sitan's Desire. Sitan's Desire is an aura enchantment for two and a green that says enchanted creature gets plus two plus two, and also has threshold. All creatures able to block enchanted creature do so. So this is going to give a boost to our creature, as well as force our opponents to block with multiple creatures. Given the right target, this will always give us the minus one counter placements. It's also going to combo really well with creatures that we have that want to be blocked by multiple creatures, such as Ikerclaw Mur and Gloom Sower. Ikerclaw Mur is a 1-1 artifact Mur creature for two mana that has Infect, and it also has whenever Ikerclaw Mur becomes blocked, it gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Gloom Sower is an 8-6 horror for five black black that has whenever Gloom Sower becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller loses two life and you gain two life. These creatures are going to get so many triggers when blocked by multiple creatures, it's not even funny. Iker Claw Mur will become large enough that we can assign minus one counters to take out whatever threats we need, and Gloom Sower's triggers could end a game immediately if our enemy's board state is wide enough. Just as important, lure effects are going to siphon away all of our opponent's blockers, allowing us to safely swing in with our own creatures for an alpha strike of infect damage, winning us the game. And that is our Obelisk Spider deck. Run properly, it's going to destroy our opponents with a War of Attrition, weakening their creatures until they can't survive the combats we're going to bring to them, and we will either drain them out with our Wall of Infect creatures, or destroy them with massive beaters or infect damage. This deck is going to run us about $17.50. The deck list is in the description. Please like and subscribe and tune in next week for our favorite stompy boys, the Gruel Guild.